Christian Unified, good morning. If you're already excited for chapel, give me two claps. Man, we haven't seen y'all in chapel all year, but you made it. Hey, I know people are still figuring out their seating assignments and where they're supposed to sit, but we're not going to worry about that. Go ahead and stand to get ready for worship. I know anytime we switch things up, sometimes we put rules in our head like we're, we're not allowed to worship or we can't worship God or we can't sing praises. I want to share this verse from Psalm 4 with you as we get started in our first chapel of 2020. Four. What it does is it compares the way that people are and the way that God is. If you're with me, say, uh-huh. Yeah, you're with me. Um, Psalm 4, verse 2 says, O men, how long shall my honor be turned into shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? So he's talking about the way that people work is we get caught up in things that don't matter sometimes. If y'all know that's true sometimes, say yeah. But he talks about God's way. He said, but know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. And so as we're kicking off chapel this new year, and we're just starting to figure out what our New Year's resolutions are, I know my New Year's resolution is to get every single one of y'all in church. I don't know what y'all's are. But as we're kicking off, know this, the Lord hears when you call to him. Y'all hear me on that? The Lord hears when you call to him. So as the worship team is about to take it away, and they're going to lead you in worship, when you sing praises to him, he's listening intently to whatever it is that you need. And he's the only one who's able to give it to you. I'm going to pray, and the worship team's going to take it from there. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for this space. Thank you for all the things that you have done in this room over the years. And thank you that you're just getting started in so many lives in here. I know even behind me, there's a, there's a baptistry where plenty of students in here have gotten baptized over the years, where they have proclaimed their relationship with you and the good work that you've done. But during this time of worship, God, would you help us to be bold and be willing to lift our voice up to you? If there's something that we feel like we need your help with, would you help us to be bold and say, God, please help me with this. Knowing that your word keeps its promise. You keep your promise and you say, you hear the call of your people. So would you help us to call on you this morning? Would you help us to start this year off right and focused on you? And all God's people said, amen. Good morning, everybody. Let's worship together. <laughs>
is calling Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling Oh, come to wonderful day you've given us to worship you. Thank you for this opportunity to come to chapel, and thank you for the barbecue afterwards. In your name we pray. Amen. Barbecue after. We all give it up for the worship team. Thank you guys so much. I know, you know, if you follow the post on Instagram, y'all already know who's speaking in chapel today, and so it's, it's such a privilege to be able to introduce your superintendent. There's so many things that Bob Roman Honestly, I, I've been impressed by. I will tell you the most impressive story for me 
about your superintendent, Bob Rollman. If y'all were there for this, I know plenty of y'all were present for it. River trip last year, Bob, came, Bob Rollman came along to be supportive and encouraging and help out however he can. And, uh, and so I was kind of doing my own thing, and I come over to, we had this like 150-foot slip and slide down into the river. And I'm like, all right, let's see what's going on over by the river. And I look, and I see Mr. Rollman in his bathing suit and his T-shirt, and he was holding one of those floaties like many of y'all were. And he was like, I'm ready to rock and roll. And he went full speed down this thing. And what's so cool about Mr. Rollman is not only is he constantly thinking about how to make y'all's education the best, but he really loves you guys. And I know sometimes it's, it's weird to hear that people are praying for you and that they care about you, but I can promise you that Mr. Rollman is one of those guys that cares so much about y'all and is willing to do just about anything to make sure you know that. So y'all please give a warm Christian Unified welcome to Bob Rollman. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year to each and every one of you. Welcome back, students and staff and teachers. And welcome to our new students. I know we have a few in the building. I won't march you up here and introduce each and every one of you, but we're thrilled to have new members of the Christian Patriot family here with us this morning. So today is the first chapel of this new year. And as you well know, uh, Pastor Jeremiah has arranged uh, a celebratory barbecue today. So afterwards, we're all going to head out to Main Street and enjoy a fabulous meal. Uh, looking forward to that right after chapel. You know that Pastor Jeremiah has a deep love for our school, for you as our students, for our teachers, for what happens in our midst. He also takes a great personal interest in our chapel program and has arranged for another terrific group of guest speakers this spring to join us for blessing and encouragement, time in the word, and enrichment. Chapel's a big deal at Christian. We emphasize it. It's important to our school community. Grateful for Grant and his leadership, and he'll be hosting every chapel this year as well here in the ministry, uh, the worship center. So we are moving our chapel program here to the worship center uh, this year for the spring. We're excited to have it here. We're also bringing back something that we haven't done for several years, and that's Spiritual Emphasis Week. So we're excited to have that. We're looking forward to welcoming a special guest. We'll get more information on that in days to come. Since we're having a barbecue today, and we're just 10 days removed from New Year's Day, I figured it might be a good time to talk about diet. How do you spend New Year's Day? Are you the kind of person that uh, sleeps in because you had a late night? Are you the kind of person that uh, sets a resolution for the new year? Or are you like me and my family? We enjoy food and football. Two great blessings as we start the new year. Some people commit to changing their diet or they resolve to more time in the word, or more exercise, or any number of things. In our home, we celebrate food, football, and a new beginning. So this year, I've got to talk about football for just a moment. Uh, first of all, a little shout out to the Liberty Flames. I know we have a lot of students that go to Lynchburg, Virginia, and uh, compete for the Flames and participate in that school. They played in the Fiesta Bowl, an amazing achievement to play in a January 1st major college football bowl. First quarter went well. The rest of the game, we'll just say the Ducks uh, had their way uh, and took care of business. But it was a joy to see that team play. There were two other games on New Year's Day that we enjoyed. Maybe you saw the Rose Bowl. Pretty special to see that great game, they call it the granddaddy of all bowl games, where the Michigan Wolverines beat the Alabama Crimson Tide. And did you know that Mr. Bug and Mrs. Bug's nephew named Terry and Arnold is a cornerback for the Alabama Crimson Tide? Had a great game, just declared for the NFL draft as well. So keep your eye on number three for Alabama. And then most importantly, I will add the culminating game that night, the Sugar Bowl my childhood team, the team I still am faithful to, the Washington Huskies, 
defeated the Texas Longhorns in the Sugar Bowl. It was a great day to be a Husky, I must say. Now, I won't mention what happened this past Monday night. I think that uh, Mr. Tivy's taking care of that with his class. I know that. The uh, Michigan Wolverines did their, uh, did their best to beat my Huskies. But I do want to introduce you to a very important member of the Husky program, and that is Allie Vandenberg. Allie is the director of football performance nutrition at the University of Washington. Allie is responsible for the diets of over 100 Husky football players, 365 days a year. That includes the elaborate and calorie-rich meals during game week. And so there in New Orleans, and there again in Houston last week, she's responsible for four days, 17 meals, all crafted by Allie and her team. That includes, on average, high energy, four to 9,000 calorie daily meals. That's two to three pounds of meat every day, every student athlete. The food offerings range from carb heavy dishes like chicken and waffles, barbecue brisket, Tex Mex tacos, or lighter options, smoothies, bowls, or salads. The players eat every single three hours. Every three hours, they are meeting and eating together. Meals are designed to be carb heavy, leading up to the game for energy, and with a focus on meats and carbs. Fried foods are strictly prohibited, as well as other diets that would be neglectful. On game day, the menu is carefully selected to avoid high fiber foods and include easily digestible diets. Special Gatorade is used during the game to provide better hydration. Diet is critical to elite college athletes. It's critical to Christians of any age as well. So my first question to you is, what is your diet? Your diet is not only what you eat, it is what you watch. It is what you listen to. It is what you read. It is who you hang out with. Today, I want to spend time talking about what you watch, what you listen to, and what you read. That's a critical part of your diet, Christian high, Christian junior high. Why? Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. That's a secret code. That is an eternal code given us by the Father. Above all else, guard your heart. What is your watching? What is your listening? What is your reading diet? Being a Christian Unified student is a great blessing for many reasons, the primary of which is the steady diet of God's Word that you receive both in your classrooms and in our chapel programs. But is that your regular diet? Seniors, I want to remind you that you are just a few short months away from the conclusion of your time at Christian. Your season here as a Christian patriot will come to an end, and that's good. That's by design. But your diet right now, your habits are critical to your future. And one of the things I'm just going to point out right now, seniors, this is just something that's vital. Are you in the habit of being in church on Sunday? Because five days a week you get it at Christian, and that's fabulous, but it will end. And so seniors, as you think through this spring, I would encourage you so strongly, be in the habit of being in church. <clears throat> Does your diet include heavy doses of fried foods or toxic things, things that destroy? Does your diet include things like zombie scrolling or, well, I'm sure if we opened up everyone's phones, you'd see various things of social media nature. Uh, what's your diet looking like there? What does TikTok look like for you? 
Your world, your challenges are unique because of this age, 2024. So I'm going to do a little throwback. It's actually a big throwback, way back to when I was in college. And I'm going to throw up a picture on the screen where you'll see I made an attempt at a goatee at that age. Uh, It didn't pan out. I shaved it off, and it's never returned. But that was my ID my senior year of college right there. And uh, that gorgeous woman is the woman that I married. And so besides the Lord, the most... Well, in fact, she's here in the front row. Can I just have her stand up? This is my wife, Leanne Rollman. The second best thing that's ever happened to me. I want to say this. Uh, about 29 years ago and a little over three weeks, right on this stage, we married one another. We walked right, she walked right down that aisle. I was all choked up. I was a mess. But it was a beautiful gift, a very, very special day. December 17th, 1994. Since that time, um, we've raised three girls. Um, I've had my ups and downs with this diet thing that I'm discussing. I want to say I'm not perfect at this. I'm a person that grows and sets goals and uh, establishes boundaries, as I'm encouraging you to do. Uh, But throwing back to those days of college when I had that goatee, I used to go with my college roommate, his name was Josh, and he and my brother Johnny and I, we sometimes would slip out of here right after classes, and we'd go down to, is it called Camp Land on the Bay down at Mission Bay? I don't even know if it's still around. But my friend Josh, my roommate, had a boat, and it was a family ski boat, and we'd just pile into that boat and hang out in the evenings, have a picnic, ski, watch the SeaWorld fireworks, and then we'd beach it on this tiny little island. It's still out there, and I'm sure it has an official name. I just called it Josh's Island. And so we'd go to Josh's Island, and we'd just throw out some sleeping bags, and we'd crash for four or five hours, and then get up at the sunrise and get to class at 7.30 a.m. It was pretty exhausting, but great memories. I do want to share one additional memory that happened my sophomore year of college, right here on this campus. And again, remember, this is the... uh, ancient era when it comes to technology. I was pulling an all-nighter. I was writing a paper. Uh, It was a history paper, and uh, it was common for me to do that. A lot of other folks in the dorms would do the same. And my RA, a resident director, a leader of our uh, area, his name is Brian. And Brian was the guy that would always have some hot cocoa or something going on in his room, and so we'd stop in at 2 a.m. or whatever it may be, and I did so that particular night. And this was the day when the computers were literally the size, I mean, they were like huge, right? And so his computer was set up on a table right in the middle of his dorm room. And me, being the 19-year-old college sophomore, stumbled over the cord that was plugging into the wall. He had been a pastoral studies major, and he was writing a long paper, like a 14-page paper on the book of Ephesians. And he'd been talking about it, it had been brewing for weeks, and all of these kinds of things. And when you do that in, those, in, that, in that day with those old PCs, boom, everything's lost. It's gone. And so there I was thinking, I've just destroyed my RA's paper due tomorrow. I'm a dead man. It worked out. He's a missionary now and has been faithful in his service and is a good friend. But I was mortified that moment. That PC working that night in 1991, my iPhone 15 Pro has 10 million times the calculating power that he had that night. And it's probably far more than what I just told you, but that's a conservative estimate. 10 million. Did anyone see the movie uh, Jurassic Park a number of years ago? And they had those supercomputers that were running at Jurassic Park. There were three of them. They were the greatest computers on the planet, face of the earth, they said. And it took apart the dinosaur geome and genome and all those kinds of things. Even in those days, they estimated that they would be massive. In comparison, your iPhone is 10,000 times stronger than the supercomputers communicated in that movie, which again just talks to 
the amazing change that comes with this device in your pocket. You are being raised in a different universe than I was, than your parents were, than your teachers were. And that's not just in technology. In those days, here on this campus, when it was a college as well, there was one TV in the student lounge, three channels, three networks, ABC, NBC, CBS. There was this little cable channel called ESPN that was coming along that was great, and we tried to get access to that, but that was it. There were about 22 scripted television programs in those days, programs like Home Improvement, The Cosby Show, uh, Roseanne, um, Cheers. Today, according to a peak TV study done annually by the FX network, there are 599 scripted television programs. That's on network TV, cable TV, and on streaming networks. That does not include reality programs. That does not include daytime TV. That does not include children's programming. It's an endless stream of content. That doesn't include YouTube. Back when I was a college student on this campus, we read a book called Amusing Ourselves to Death by Neil Postman. This came out in 1985. It is an ancient book. But looking back now, it's really a prophetic book because it talks about what I experienced with television and what you experience with the advent of a supercomputer at your fingertips. <clears throat> Neil Postman's primary point in his book was that America was becoming a culture of absolute amusement at the expense of truth. He spoke of how your parents' generation was being raised in the age of the television rather than the age of the book, as centuries of Christians had been raised. And he understood that there was a different form of mental formation that took place by watching television rather than by reading a text. Reading a text changes the mind in an absolutely powerful way that television, scrolling TikTok, watching YouTube, does not. In his book, Neil Postman warned that the American people were becoming the most entertained and least informed people in the Western world. He spoke about the great transformation taking place in the U.S. from the age of the text, from the age of the book, foundational text, literature, scripture, to show business, the age of show business where everything is entertainment. There's a great deal of evidence that Americans would rather follow an entertainment track, a laugh track on a sitcom, than to even deal with one another face to face. I hope you get face to face time with your classmates. I hope you put down your phone, put it in your pocket, and get time engaging one another. What a gift that is. Again, in his title, Amusing Ourselves to Death, it was a great deal of evidence that we have critical need to read. It's good. It's work. It can be hard. But it's vitally good. And so students, and the key word there is students. You are here for a purpose and for a reason. Take up and read. Neil Postman also contrasts two great books in Amusing Ourselves to Death, uh, George Orwell's 1984 and Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. He stated in the book, what Orwell feared were those who would ban books. What Huxley feared is that there would be no reason to ban books, for there would be no one who wanted to read one. He continued, Orwell feared those who would deprive us of information and Huxley feared those who would give us too much information. Orwell feared that the truth might be concealed from us. Huxley feared that the truth would be drowned in a sea of irrelevance. 599 scripted television programs. 
YouTube. Just YouTube. Did you know that the founders of Google named it Google, G-O-O-G-O-L, meaning the number one with 100 zeros behind it. The concept being infinity, overwhelming doses. So Christian High, I have two questions for you today as we start this spring semester. How is your diet? I don't mean the cheeseburgers, chips, cookies, and soda that we're going to enjoy at our barbecue in a few moments. I mean the what you consume, what you watch, what you listen to, what you read part of your diet. It is who you are becoming. How much time are you willing to give to your phone? Our challenge is that we are called to be stewards of all things, including our time and including our use of technology. That stewardship is greater than ever before. You're under pressure with it, I get it. This technology is not neutral. In some ways, it's very good, and in other ways, very destructive. It makes its effect upon us. I'm not saying we should never use technology or that Christians should never give themselves to entertainment. That's not what I'm saying today. What I'm saying is Christians should never do so without very strong reflection about what it really means to our lives and how we should be good stewards of our time and how we guard what kind of messages are coming into our hearts and into our minds. We must cover all of it, including one another, in prayer. Because remember, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Now, I've talked about TV, the iPhone, technology, but I want to remind you something critical here. For thousands of years, God's people have been people of the book, people of the text, people of the word. I love how Albert Muller, the Southern Baptist University president, puts it. He says, we value the word. That's true in the Old Testament when God's people gave the children of Israel, when God gave the children of Israel the Torah and the prophets and the law. And it's true in the New Testament as we are given all of the writings of the New Testament. Together, God has given us a text, a holy book, 66 in total. And it is the sole authority which within the life of the church and within the life of our school. This school is built on the eternal word. There is no confusion here. There is no overwhelming with information. This is the word, the text upon which we build our lives, our community, our school. It's God's word to us, inerrant, infallible, verbally inspired, and it's simply a text. It is a text to read. It is a text to be meditated upon. It is a text to be memorized. I love that we memorize scripture at our school. It is a text to be taught. It is a text to be preached. It is a text that transforms. All kinds of technologies have come and gone and will come and go. But the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christian Unified Schools of San Diego, we are left with a fundamental technology, the Word of God. That's what we'll be celebrating this spring in our chapel program, throughout our courses this year. We're excited to experience these things because in this te technological driven world, one thing is true from the scripture. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord stands forever. That is our great hope, Christian. Uh, seniors, God bless you as you wrap up your time here at our school. Again, I want to challenge you to be in the local church as your season at Christian High comes to a, conclu a conclusion. And as we embark on this year, 2024, I challenge you to be people of the book, to be in the book, to be of the book, students of God's 
eternal word, our one hope. Thanks for your time this morning. Let's close in prayer before we head out to the barbecue. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we thank you for this school. We thank you for each student here in our midst. We thank you for the new students that have joined us. We ask, Lord, your blessing upon each and every one, upon their homes, upon their families, their parents. We thank you, Lord, for our teachers. We thank you for the men and women called to the classroom who are committed to excellence in uh, academics and also the faith, Lord. We just thank you for the relationships upon which we build this school community. And we thank you most of all today for the text, for the word. Thank you for technology and the things that come with it, Lord. Allow us to guard our hearts as we engage uh, in so many different ways with the world and the culture. Uh, allow us those, um, those guardrails that are so critical to protecting our lives, our minds, our hearts. Thank you for our school. We ask your blessing upon this spring, and we thank you in Christ's name. Amen.